Good morning and welcome to the online church service of New Life Sha'alam. Thank you for joining us today. Following Reverend Wendy Ching's lovely exposition on Psalm 46 last Sunday, this morning we are glad to have Reverend David Tham preach on verse 10 of Psalm 46. This is a really timely message for us today as we face an uncertain future. Psalm 46 is written in third person to remind readers that God is at work in the midst of our struggles. But when we reach verse 10, however, something happens. That point of view shifts from the third person to God Himself. Here the Lord Himself addresses the readers directly. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Well, that change in point of view certainly grabs our attention. I believe God wants to tell us something very important, and that is to be still. And let us welcome Brother Jim Wu as he leads us into a time of worship. Amen. God is able. He will never fail. He is so mighty God. Greater than all we seek. Greater than all we ask. He has done great things. Lifted up. He defeated the grave. Raised to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is God is with us, God is on our side, He will make a way. Far above all we know, far above all we hope, He has done great things, lifted up, He defeated the grave. Raised to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. God is with us. He will go before. He will never leave us. He will never leave us. God is for us. He has open arms. He will never fail us. He will never fail us. Lift it up. He defeated the grave. Raised to life. Our God is able. In His name. We overcome for the Lord, our God is able. Lift it up, He defeated the grave. Grace to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome for the Lord. Our God is able for the Lord. Our God is able for the Lord. Our God is
That is who you are. 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 Oh, yeah. That is who Hi Church, good morning. So glad that we can meet again online. Initially, I thought the churches would have to close down due to pandemic. But thank God for technology that we can still uh, connect, and the church can go on even in your homes and wherever we are. You know, last Sunday, uh, Pastor Wendy was sharing with us a very encouraging message. Psalms 46, uh, pointing us to God as our refuge and strength. I, it came to me as a confirmation personally, because God has been ministering to me this season from that Psalms as well. Particularly verse 10, when God said, Be still and know that I am God. So today I'd like to uh, share further from this verse uh, in the midst of the crisis and chaos in this world. We are living in uh, unprecedented times. Okay? COVID-19 has uh, much destroyed uh, what man has built, in particular health and wealth. While the world is struggling to cope with this situation, we see nations, powerful nations, are rising up against one another. In trade war, cold war, and who knows you know, what kind of war will happen in time to come. We also see lawlessness, um, you know, with riots and street protests going on in some cities and places. Uh, our own country is also not spared with all these political uncertainties. There seems to be a parallel between the world today and the world of the psalmist in Psalms 46, where in verse 2 to 3 it says that the disasters actually struck. The earth gave way, mountains fell, waters roared, and mountains quaked. And then we also see in verse 6, that nations in uproar and kingdoms fell. In the midst of all this turmoil, amazingly, the psalmist could declare God as refuge and strength. And twice he also said, The Lord Almighty with us, the God of Jacob, our fortress. Now, these were faith statements which one could only declare only upon hearing directly from the Lord. As verse 10 is the only verse that the psalmist actually recorded as God's own saying, Be still and know that I am God. Now I ask myself, how can we achieve what God is saying in this verse? As I thought about it, I have these three areas, you know, which I submit to you how we can be still and know our God. Number one, through His Word. Through His Word. Can it be possible 
to remain still if we do not hear from God. You know, if we listen to the daily news um, and staring at the gloom and doom of what is happening, I think it will be difficult to find peace. There will be anxieties, fears, and worries over what lies ahead. Now, I used to work uh, in a shipping company over more than 30 years, uh, which is half, almost half my life. Uh, ships are designed to sail the oceans and will be able to withstand storms and uh, huge waves. But ships won't sink because of the storms and huge waves. They will only sink if whatever outside enters inside. Just like Titanic, hitting the iceberg and water started seeping in. It took them three years to build this huge mega ship. But in less than three hours, it sank into the bottom of the ocean. That was in 1912. Now, if we can stop the negatives of the world from getting into us, we will have better chance of survival. Although there's a need to follow the news, uh, to keep ourselves abreast of world events and what is happening out there, there is even a greater need for us to hear what God has to say to us. Now, only God can steal our hearts and our minds with His Word. I always uh, hold out having daily devotions, which is so important for every Christian. Reading the Bible and listening to God personally. There are many devotionals and uh, Bible reading apps we can use. The more we hear God's word, the more faith will be built up in us. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, for faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And through His Word, not only will we be able to steal our hearts and our minds, we will also get to know God even more. We can experience Him personally and intimately when we hear Him speak to us. His still small voice will ring in our hearts and calm our to bring us true turbulence of life. Number two, besides knowing God through His Word, we will know God through worship. True worship. Now, when we worship Him, we behold Him in His presence and we will be able to see God seated high on the throne above. Like Isaiah did. And our perspective about situations and things or life will change. We will be able to see him bigger than any problem in the world, bigger than the giants in our lives, definitely bigger than COVID 19 and the global economic crisis that is happening now. We will see Him as the Almighty who can do anything because He's on the throne, He rules and He reigns. Besides, He's the maker of heaven and earth. Now, during the initial lockdown, I started on a prayer mode. Every evening, I joined the church to pray. So, we'll be all in prayer mode. But after a while, I switch more towards worship mode. After the worship, then I go into prayer. I just play the YouTube songs and worship along. Um, times I just let the songs you know, minister to me while I sit still. It can be either we sing along or you just let the songs minister to us. 
As I wait in His presence, I find my strength started to be renewed. Like Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now worship can turn us uh, warriors to be warriors. I am uh, towards a warrior type of person. When I don't know what to do, when I'm not in control of a situation, or I can't see the future, I get very worried. But when I worship, I see God on the throne. He knows what to do. He is in control and he can see the future. So, I will hand all my worries into his hands. And in that way, when I pass my worries to God, you know, I'm more free and I get my strength back and then I can rise to war again, to face the battles day by day. Now, so we can be still and know our God through His Word and through worship. Now, thirdly, is we will know God through His works. God works in marvelous ways and diverse ways. When he said, be still and know that I am God, it's like saying, come on, relax. I'm here. I know what I'm doing. In Exodus 14, um, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, okay, they were moving towards a certain place and they reached this place near the Red Sea. When they reached that place, they also encountered Pharaoh and his chariots come rushing to, uh, to them. So in a way, they were sandwiched and they were dead end. In front was the Red Sea, behind were the chariots of Pharaoh. So they were terrified. And the Israelites complained. And then they complained to the pastor, against the pastor. And that was Moses for leading them to dead end. But let's see how Moses answered them. Exodus 14 verse 13 says, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. You need only to be still. I tell you when these words were spoken by Moses to the people, God then instructed Moses, you know, to lift up his rod. And eventually the Red Sea parted. And the Israelites could walk through it. But when the chariots of Pharaoh came rushing against them, they were all drowned when the Red Sea closed up. They end? Not really when we have God on our side. God will make a way where there seems no way. Amen? Now the word still in Hebrew is Rafa, Rafa, which means to let go, release, and surrender. Now, sometimes we just need to learn to surrender into the hands of God. We have been fighting our battles, we are trying to manage the problems or uh, difficulties, and we get very tired and strained. Sometimes we can manage. At times, 
we just cannot. And in those times, we really need God to come in. Let go and let God handle our problems. And don't strive. Let Him fight for us. Just like Moses said to the Israelites. Let God fight for us. Many wonder why COVID-19 has not stopped despite so much prayer. As if God is sleeping. Is God sleeping? No, God doesn't sleep. It tells us in Psalms 121, okay, the Lord neither slumbers nor sleeps. But God has His own plan. As heaven is higher than the earth, so are His ways, and so are His thoughts higher than ours. That's in Isaiah 55, verse 9. No man can detect what God is doing. He has the whole world in His hands, and in His own time, He makes all things beautiful. In His own time. God will do it. You know, there have been predictions, scientific and religious, even prophecies, that COVID-19 would end in May. I don't know whether you came across that. And now it's June. Really, no man will know. Only God, who is seated above, knows when He will end it. All we have to do is to pray and trust God to do it. Because God has His purpose in everything. Now the message to us is very clear. Just be still and see what He will do. He has proven Himself over and over in the Bible with all the miracles that happened from Genesis to Revelation. And I believe He will do it again. But it will be on His terms, not our terms. Okay. There is this beautiful song I sing almost every day. I would say this is a song of the year. The Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, and light in the darkness. That's who He is. Our God. Hallelujah. That's who He is. Amen. So we have to surrender to God and let Him do what He needs to do. We do our part in praying, worshipping Him, and get to know Him more. Now I also uh, like to share with you this. There are times when God actually doesn't seem to remove the problem right away. Instead, He chooses to give us the grace and strength to go through it. A classic example uh, was Paul. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, when he was uh, given a thorn in the flesh by Satan to torment him, he said, he prayed, three times, thrice he prayed, but the thorn didn't leave him. Instead, God spoke to him and said, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Yeah. God didn't remove the thorns, but God gave him strength and grace to go through it. There was a story uh, which encouraged me a lot in uh, over, the over the years. A uh, story of a man who heard God uh, told him, tell him to push a rock, a huge rock outside his house. And uh, he didn't know why, but being a good Christian, he just obeyed God. What God said, he just obeyed. So day after day, he will be out there pushing that rock. Day after day, he will be doing that. But then, the rock didn't even move an inch. 
after some weeks he got very tired and then while he was just uh, lying down there you know trying to crack he said what to do then he heard a voice he heard a voice telling him come on give up it's useless you know all your works are in vain you know you don't have the strength you are just so weak after hearing all that he got very discouraged he got so disheartened but then before he gave up he went to God in prayer remember hearing from God tell him to push the rock so he came to God God you told me to do so and I have obeyed you week after week but then see the result there's no result at all just then he paused in his prayer he heard God answer back and he said my son yes I've told you to push the rock and you have done well you have obeyed me I want you now to go and look at the mirror and see the muscles that have been built in your body I told you to push the rock I didn't tell you to move it so now I am going to move the rock interesting story you know it's nice that every time when we pray God removes the problem which he can easily do so you know no problem at all there's nothing too big for God nothing impossible but then it may not build the tenacity in us to handle the next wave if we see his feet to strengthen our spiritual muscles just like the guy the, the guy who we got to push the rock after some weeks all the masters came up if God sees it fit to do so so that we can have the masters to cope with the future problems then he may just see us through with his grace and strength so God in his wisdom can choose to help solve our problem immediately or over time or he can grant us the grace and strength to go through it it is his prerogative all we need to do is just to trust him let us learn to be still and know that he is God through his word through worship and through his works Amen. I would like to pray with you. Okay. And let's pray. Close our eyes and look to God. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your words in Psalms 46. And that was the only verse in that psalm that you yourself spoke and said, Be still and know that I am God. Lord, we just want to receive that word in this season as we go through the times that in these unprecedented times. Lord, we ask you for grace and strength as well. And you yourself will be able to solve this world's problem. And you yourself, in your own time, will be able to see this world's problem be solved. So we just trust you and surrender ourselves to you. So I pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.